Hi, this is Kevin from Mathsaurus, and in this video we're going to be working through questions 16 to 20 of the Senior Maths Challenge from 2020. I've put all of these questions and more in a free online course, Get Ready for the Senior Maths Challenge. In that course you can work through all of these questions, not just with the video solutions, but also with my video hints before each question to help you get into the question and to solve it yourself. So I think that's really the best way to prepare for the Senior Maths Challenge. I'll put a link in the description below, you can go over there and sign up, it's totally free and there's no ads or distractions like there are here on YouTube, so do go and sign up over there. Of course if you'd rather watch the solutions right here on YouTube, you're very welcome to as well, and we will now get on with solving those problems. So we want to know which of these diagrams represents the set of all the points satisfying y squared minus 2y equals x squared plus 2x. We might call that the locus of the points, sometimes a graph, although uh, we need to be a bit careful about the uh, technically what those things mean. But really, what we've got is a diagram where on each of the diagrams, uh, if uh, the coordinates of a point satisfy the algebraic relation, then that's a point on the diagram, and if it's not, it's not. So one way when you've got a multiple choice question like this uh, to work out which one is which, this happens a lot on the Oxford uh, Maths Admissions Test questions as well actually, is that you can sort of find some points and uh, that must lie on the uh, diagram here and then rule out some of the options. So perhaps the most obvious thing to do here is just to factorise uh, each side uh, of this equation and say y, y minus 2 is equal to x times x plus 2, and now I can see I can get 0 equals 0 here by either making x equals 0 and y equals 0, so 0, 0 must lie uh, on here, and in fact uh, 0, 0, the origin is on all of these, so that doesn't help us too much, but we can also see that 0, 2 would make, uh, x is 0, y is 2 would make both sides 0 here, and um, I could do um, x is minus 2 and y is 2, and I could also then do um, y is 0 and x is minus 2. So um, if I think about the ones where I've got axis intersections here, I must have uh, a y-axis intercept that's uh, above 0, so that could be a or b, but it can't be c, right, there's no 0, 2 isn't on that one, and similarly it can't be d, 0, 2 isn't on that one, and it could be e, if I look at minus 2, 0, well okay that can't, that, that point is not on a, clearly it just goes to the origin here, um, could be this this point could be minus two. We don't know it, but it could be, and this point could be minus two. So I've narrowed it down to B or E. So I've got a 50-50 uh, guess, and now I've got to look at these two diagrams. Now I've got either these curved um, um, with some values of uh, y that are just not attainable, and actually one way to do this would be to to, to look through this and say, oh, okay, if I take some values of y, you might start thinking, okay, oh, is it possible for there to be any values of y uh, where there isn't a value of x? Um, you could go down that line of thinking, that's not that's not what I'm going to do here, um, because actually what I've also got in the second one is two straight lines, and in particular this second straight line, the one that goes um, down here, looks pretty identifiable to me, it looks like it's probably y equals minus x. Now again, we haven't got the scales on the axis, so we don't know that for sure, but once you've had that thought, you can look at this and say, oh well hang on, what happens if I just put y equals minus x, right, I get minus x squared minus 2 times minus x on the left hand side, and that simplifies to give uh, x squared plus 2x. So actually any any point where y is equal to minus x, um, any you know, any pair of coordinates where you know I've got 2 minus 2 or 4 minus 4 or minus 6, 6, they must all lie uh, on the on the diagram. So actually that line y equals minus x must be totally included and so uh, it's not there in B so we've narrowed it down to E. Um, in fact this other line you can also work out, um, well we know it goes through um, 2 and minus 2 here, so actually it must be the straight line uh, y is equal to x plus 2, and if you substitute y equals x plus 2 uh, into the left hand side and get x plus 2 squared minus 2 times x plus 2, then you get x squared plus 4x plus 4 minus 4x, uh, sorry, minus 2x uh, minus 4, the 4s cancel out, and I get x squared plus 2x as well. So again, any uh, pair of coordinates that satisfy y equals x plus 2 must be in this diagram, and so really the answer here is e. Um, so I think that's the sort of way I would kind of practically go about these questions. First look for some points that can really narrow it down, sometimes that might just get you to the answer, and then we might have to do something a bit more clever. Um, kind of once we've got that answer, we might see um, an even better way of doing it, or perhaps you might even have started by this method. Um, we could rearrange this original equation to say y squared minus x squared equals 2x plus 2y, and then we could 
um, factorize using the difference of two squares here, y minus x times y plus x is equal to two times uh, x plus y. So actually, if I think of this side as y minus x times uh, x plus y is two lots of x plus y, and then let's subtract the two x plus y from both sides. Um, then we get something like this, and now I've got y minus x, lots of x plus y, minus two lots of x plus y. So I can do another factorization here and say, well, that's just y minus x minus two lots of uh, x plus y equals zero. And then um, we get to the either from this second bracket, uh, y is equal to minus x, or from this other bracket, we get y minus x minus two is zero, or y is equal to x plus two. And that's another way of seeing um, that the answer must be e. I don't think this question is quite as hard as it looks. We want positive integers m, n, and p that satisfy uh, this equation. I know that a bit of trial and error should really just get us there uh, very quickly. Um, certainly, if we look at this, what, we, what have we got at the structure? We've got 3 times m. Well, if m is an integer, that's certainly going to be an integer. So um, if I do 17 minus that, I need to get an integer. So the, really, the key problem here is to make this thing an integer, and then we'll check that it makes the whole equation work as well. So if I'm going to do 3 divided by uh, n plus 1 over p. These have both got to be integers, uh, positive, well, positive integers, right? And, and this overall thing has to be an integer. So, like, you know, if I make n 2, 3 over 2 plus something is not going to be an integer. It's not going to be a whole number. So actually, and if I make it any bigger, 3 over 3 plus something, 4 plus something, 5 plus something, I mean, there's no other way of making this an integer apart from taking n equals 1 here. And then uh, I just have to think of what, what fraction uh, will make this an integer. Well, it's going to have to be one half. It's, I mean, I don't know if that's obvious. If you think about different values, you don't have to try too many to work out uh, this. You need to try one, it doesn't work. Two, it does work. And then as soon as we've got that, we've got 3 over 1.5 here, which is 2. So I just check that that does, there is a value of m that makes this work. So I would have 3m plus 2 is 17. So 3m is 15, and then m equals 5. So I found three values that work here. And in the math challenge as well, if you've got values that work, you don't have to think too much about whether they're unique because this question has been posed as it has. Uh, they must be unique. So we must have n equals 1 um, here, p equals 2, and uh, m equals 5. And so the answer is a2. Two circles C1 and C2 have their centers at the point 3, 4, and touch a third circle C3. The center of C3 is at the point 0, 0, and its radius is 2. And we want to work out the sum of the radii of these two circles, uh, C1 and C2. I'm not going to worry too much about that at the moment. I think I'll just look at the information and start trying to draw a picture. So let's try and draw C1 um, and C2 to begin with. Now, I'm going to use the circle tool here. Obviously, if you can draw reasonably good circles freehand in the actual maths challenge, that's quite useful. Um, and uh, so we'll have concentric circles here. I'll just do it roughly. I'm not going to get it right here, I think. Anyway, um, uh, so they're at 3, 4. And I need to now uh, make this third circle, C3. OK, so let's just call these ones C1 and C2. C3 has to just touch these two circles um, and have center 0, 0. Now, there's kind of two ways that I could uh, make another circle uh, just uh, touch these two, right? I could maybe have, uh, you know, one, something like this. Um, but you quickly realize that in this situation, OK, I can't quite get it to exactly touch here, something like that. In this situation, OK, if the center of this one is the origin, right, well, this distance from the origin to 3, 4, it will be a 3, 4, 5 triangle. Um, so actually, this circle's got up would end up having a radius much bigger than 2, OK? Um, so the other way we can do it is to put this third circle somewhere down here. and uh, and so it's sort of like just in between these two circles, and this looks a lot more reasonable that it could have a radius of two. Okay, so if this is the origin, let's just make that argument a bit more clearly about this three, four, five triangle. Okay, so um, that means that uh, this length would be three, this would be four by Pythagoras. We've got three squared plus four squared is five squared, and this length is five. Um, so that means that uh, well, we know that if this radius is two, and uh, then this one. This, the radius of the circle here must be 3, and then this distance is also 2. And if you put those three things together, you get the radius of C2. So C2 has its radius, let's call it R2, is equal to 3 plus 2 plus 2, which is 7. And C1 has radius R1 here, which is 3. So the sum of the radii here 
uh, of C1 and C2 would be 7 plus 3, which is 10, and the answer is E. So I don't think there's any need to overthink this one. Um, there's only, you know, 9 or 10, I suppose, single digit numbers if we include 0 um, to check here. Uh, we want to make P minus Q uh, equal to R. Um, and uh, r minus s to be equal to t and how many different values could t take so let's just run through them okay so if t is zero um r minus r and s would have to be equal so we can't make t zero um if t is one i can just start trying to um find things that work so three minus two is one um and then r would be three so i could do something like nine minus six nice and easy so um let's write the ones that have worked up here so one works uh, for 2, I could now try and do 3 minus 1 is 2. Actually, this is the same as I've just done before. In, the, in the last one. I could also have 9 minus 6 is, is 3 here, so 2 works. Um, for 3, I could do something like 4 minus 1. I'm trying to just choose these as small as possible to give myself plenty of choice for the other equation here. Um, so 4 could be something like 9 minus 5 without repeating anything. Um, so that gives me... Uh, 3 as a possibility uh, here if I want to make it 4 I could do uh, 5 minus 1 and make r equal uh, to 5 now, I can't do 9 minus 4 here um, but I could do say 8 minus 3 and get 5 and they're all uh, different so we can certainly do 4 um, if I want to do 5 again let's do 6 minus 1 and then I need to make r equal 6 so I could do something like 8 minus 2 to make them all different. And so t equals 5 works. And when I try t equals 6, let's do 7 minus 1. I'd need to make r equal to 7. And then I could do something like 9 minus 2 to make them all different. And so 6 works as well. I can actually stop now because we found 6 values that work. And that's the largest possible answer here. So the answer must be a6. If you do try other ones, if you tried to go to 7 here, now I'm going to have to do something like... Uh, 8 minus 1, but then to get 8, I'd have to do 9 minus 1, which I can't do, and I can't do 8 minus 0 without repeating. Um, I could also do uh, 9 minus 2, but then I'd have to make the difference 9, and that also doesn't work. And the same if you try 8 here, I'm going to have to do something like 9 minus 1, but then I can't make the difference here 9. So you can't do any other values. Um, but as I say, you don't really need to check those last ones. Once you've found 6 that work, you know that the answer is A, 6. So this question is really about being good at indices. Uh, if you want some video lessons about indices, check out my course, Get Ready for A-Level Maths. The videos about indices are actually part of the free part of that course. So you could watch those and get really good uh, at this topic before you do this question. I'm, I'm gonna assume you know the rules of indices here and just uh, go ahead and solve it. So the first equation we've got here, four to the y is one over eight times root two to the x plus two. Um, you could write 4 as 2 squared, and so that would be 2 squared to the power of y, and then 8 would be 2 cubed. Now root 2 is 2 to the 1 half. Again, that's something you should, I'm just going to assume that you know as a fact, but look it up if not, or look at that, get ready for a level maths course. And uh, that's to the power of x plus 2. Now when I've got 1 over an index, that makes the index negative and okay maybe I should simplify the denominator first here actually so this would be 2 to the this bit here would be 2 to the half x plus 2 and then I've got 2 to the 3 times that so it would be um, 2 to the 3 plus 1 half uh, x plus 2 but it's 1 over that so actually it's 2 to the 2 to the minus that so 2 to the minus 3 plus a half uh, x plus 2 and on the left here I'd have 2 to the 2y so okay I've got both of these as 2 to the power of something so I can just say 2y is equal to minus let's write this as minus 3 minus a half uh, x plus 2 and I'll tidy it up a bit by multiplying by 2 both sides 4y is equal to minus 6 and then minus x minus 2 or 4y is equal to uh, minus x minus 8 okay now the other one's a bit easier to deal with um, 9 to the x, that's 3 squared to the x, so that's 3 to the 2x, times 3 to the y, and 3 root 3, that's 3 to the 1 times 3 to the 1 half, so that's 3 to the 1.5. Um, and so I've got 2x plus y is equal to 1.5, so I've got, let's write 4x plus 2y is equal to 3, so I've got rid of, uh, well, I've got everything in nice whole numbers. So I've got two simultaneous equations here uh, for 
uh, x and y. If we let's take the second one and double it, and then we've got uh, 8x plus 4y is equal to 6. So 4y is equal to 6 minus 8x. If I substitute that in here, I get 6 minus 8x equals minus 8 minus x. But you can solve the simultaneous equations however you want here. I'm assuming again that's something you know how to do. Um, so if I uh, add the 8x to both sides, I get 7x, and add the 8 to both sides, I get 14. So we get x equals 2. And if we just plug that back into one of these equations, let's put it into this one here. I've got 4y is equal to minus 2 minus 8, which is minus 10. So y is minus 2.5. And then that means that x plus y is 2 minus 2.5. That's minus 0 0.5. So finally, 5 to the x plus y, that's 5 to the minus 0 0.5. That's 1 over 5 to the 0 0.5, which is 1 over uh, the square root of 5. And so the answer is E. As I say, I've done that a bit quickly because I'm sort of assuming that you know how indices work here. The main thing for this question is just to uh, have learned about indices, watch those other videos in the course, get ready for A-level maths if you want to, uh, and be be pretty slick at them. Actually, once you know about indices here, it's fairly clear what you have to do in this question. I think if you've, if you've seen a question like this before, there's just a bit of work that you've got to go through and uh, solve the simultaneous equations and get the answer. Really hope you found that useful. Don't forget that all of these questions and more are included in the free online course, Get Ready for the Senior Maths Challenge, where you can work through all of these problems and more with the video solutions and also my video hints. You can select the answers, it'll tell you which ones you've got right or wrong, and you can work through the whole paper like that. I really think it's the best way to prepare for the Senior Maths Challenge. Anyway, really hope you found this useful. Please do like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It really helps me uh, get this content out there and helps get this into the uh, feeds of as many people who might find it useful as possible. Anyway, that's all for now. I'll see you in the next video.